Well, if you thought the subprime mortgage meltdown was a story, what about the potential of a brand bubble? Essentially what we did is we looked back and measured brands through Brand Asset Valuator, and this is the largest consumer database of brands in the world. And what we found is while brand value has increased by over 80% in the last three decades, trust in brands has declined by 50%, product quality has declined by 24%, awareness of brands and regard are all in double-digit decline. So something fundamentally really different between how Wall Street values brands and how consumers value brands. What consumers were saying is in order to sell me, well, you need to have my back. You need to understand where I'm coming from. So if you think about the types of programs like Hyundai's Buyer Reassurance Program, Bank of America's Keep the Change, it's these gestures. It's these things that consumers are looking for where companies are going to understand where they're coming from as a precursor to selling them. We worked with professors from the Columbia Business School and the University of Washington Business School. They had done a lot of their early work with David Acker on branding. And what we found was this quality inside a brand that's called energized differentiation. And essentially it's about a brand not only being different, but continuing to be different. So great brands that are focused on driving this energy, driving this differentiation, what they're actually able to do is escape their categories. You know, I mean, there's been those famous cases, right, where the, the Colts left Colts, right? Baltimore in the middle, in the middle of, the night, of the night. Right, yeah. On, yeah. on the Mayflower. <laughs> All the metaphors were, were fantastic. No, I think there are, there are big challenges, right, because you're, you're taking the fans that are in, back in, in the home market, are they going to stay loyal to them? You know, that was famous, too, with Cleveland when the Browns went, became the Ravens. Did the Cleveland fans try to hold on to that and become Ravens fans while you're then building an, a new market and yeah. a new relevance? On this values piece, I think it was interesting, you know, when people talked about it, it was about, I want to support companies who are about thrift, who are about self-reliance, who are about stewardship, and a lot of these things were happening at the grassroots level. So it's interesting, right? Now I, want, I don't want to support the big bad, bad corporation anymore, do I? Very big, strong local movement. We spent time in Detroit where the average price of a house in inner city Detroit is $18,000, and yet we found amazing entrepreneurs that were building local businesses there, creating sort of a virtuous circle, um, basically trying to drive people back into the inner city to shop in their restaurants to help support the local economy. There's a fundamental shift today in the role of masculine and feminine values. We live in a world that's increasingly social, interdependent, and transparent. And in this world, feminine values are ascendant. Because the most innovative among us are breaking away from traditional structures to be more flexible, more collaborative, and nurturing. So we're really asking our leaders to put themselves out there, to show and express their feelings, to include other people in their decision making, and to sort of lead by example. It's a, it's a new definition of leadership. It's less about sort of leadership by intimidation or leadership by control and aggression. It's a, it's a much more sort of subtle, nuanced, and, and feminine style of leader that we saw in our data that people were looking for around the world.